Ah, oh, hello. Glad you're here. Um, I've called you here because I wanted to talk to you about two things. One of them is um, tuning uh, and my special method. And um, the second thing is capos. So first of all, I'd like to share with you my method of sweetened tuning. I don't believe that you can trust that every note on the fretboard is going to be true, compensating for your fingers, your pressure and things like that, and the fret heights and all those little business. So you're know, just being tuned in at the nut doesn't always help. I do almost all my songs out of a G shape or a C shape. Whether or not, of course, I'm using a capo, um, it'll still tend to be a G shape or a C shape. You got that? Right, good. Okay, so this is what I do. I tune to the notes of a what we call a bluegrass G with an extra D. So on the on the bass E, I will tune to a G, on the A to the B. The D and the G are open. D on the B string and the G on the E string. That seems to compensate com compensate compensate for any slight errors and of course that very troublesome B string. Right, enough of that. Take this off. Too big to leave on there. Now I want to talk about capos. For many, 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 many years I have um, used only the cheap Shub C3 capos. Cheap enough to have one for every guitar and adjusted for that guitar only. So um, on this one, for instance, this is the one that, use, that, that lives with this one. I generally only put them on the second or the fourth fret, but for one song only, I put, put it on the fifth yet and play C in C using a G shape. And it's just for the intro. intro and part of the break for um, uh, Poor Boy's Delight. Poor Boy's Delight song, yeah. Um, so these have served me pretty well. They've got replaceable parts, the rubbers and the little del ring doodads. This is the Mark I version which I prefer and I've never had to replace anything, they're fine. But I spend too much time on acoustic guitar forums one in particular, which is called the Acoustic Guitar Forum, um, I see frequent mentions of very, very, very expensive uh, capos called Elliot McKinney. Uh, whether that's one person or two, I'm not sure. I've got a feeling it's two. Um, and um, they're incredibly expensive, but everybody says they're absolutely wonderful. So um, for my birthday last March, 2023, I thought I would splash out and buy myself one. We're talking about $200 plus shipping or something like that. So I got onto the website and I went through incredibly complex ordering process, got to the bottom, put in my name and address, and as soon as I put in United Kingdom, boom, uh, we don't ship to the United Kingdom. Thank you for your understanding. Well, I didn't understand, but now I have um, I believe that it's something due to uh, the uh, the UK Customs and Excise who have made a requirement for some American uh, shippers to have a VAT, a value added tax, that's a British tax account. And you know how Americans like taxes, so I'm not really that surprised. So I won't be getting myself an expensive Elliot McKinney capo any time. Um, and um, so I started looking for other capos and I've got one here which I shall show they're called either stirrup capos or cradle capos whichever way you want to look at them um, and in the UK there are only three all made in the USA of course but um, there is one made by Shub the same company as this called the F1 Fine Tune which is uh, about a hundred pounds or thereabouts. And there is the page. Now I know the page of old, I used to have one of those black ones, but they had a nasty little hinged bracket that could only be put on 
and pulled off with a thumbnail. Now thumbnails are rather important to me because I'm a finger picker as well as a flat picker. So I'm not going to damage that just for the sake of the, the capo. Um, and there's one made by Daddario. Yes, the string people. Um, and this is called a Daddario cradle cable. This is the very one. So I started asking on the Acoustic Guitar Forum um, why people like these cradle or stirrup um, capos and things like that. Now, one of the main selling points, apparently, is the facility to be able to put them on the on the guitar and leave it above the above the nut. That, that's not going to work for me at all, and I don't really need to do that. Um, I don't know what the advantage of that is. Um, these things, uh, never thought about clipping a capo on there. Uh, they're on and they're off very quickly. But one kind person, one Robin of Wales, um, decided just to send me one, a used one, but he has settled on the page latest versions, which incidentally is a, a PC6 WETI. You won't forget that in a hurry, will you? Um, and that, that's what he, he uses, a slightly modified version of the original Blacks, I suspect and doesn't use his Daddario one. So he put it in a jiffy bag and he sent it to me, bless him. So um, I thought I would try this and I would try and compare it with the other ones. It's a, it's, it's a very tidy looking thing. It's less than half the weight of one of these. I don't know whether that's significant. Now, as I possibly mentioned, I use capo mostly on second and fourth, but I'm gonna try this on this, on the fifth fret which I use for one song only, and that's really only for the uh, for the intro and the break. And so I'm playing in C with a G shape. Yeah. it's called and that's that's my arrangement for it of course so this capo will work perfectly fine but you've got to unscrew it and screw it and then press it a little bit that's fine so you've got to do that every time so if I playing something in G and then I'm playing something in E for instance I'll have to screw it up and tension it until the last note is clear yeah, okay, that's fine. You're going to have a little bit of chat while you're doing this business. Would it work on a 12 string? So, here is my Martin, which is probably not perfect in tune, and my Vegan pick to go with my Martin which has a 1 and 7 eighths nut, 24.9 scale, 2 and 5 sixteenths string spacing, string spacing. And I have a Shub 12 string capo that works perfectly well for this. On, click. And off. Let's tempt the Daddario on a 12 string capo. I checked the rubber, it's just under two inches. I would never, seriously, on this guitar go higher than a fourth. So I'm screwing it in and it's now holding itself. So I've got the arms are very, very close to the binding. Yeah. Just keep, keep winding. Till every note rings true. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit of contact. It's got a little sticky out bit there which tends to collide with the knuckle of my index finger. So I've done the song. I'm now going to take it off. 
about three turns and then squeeze it and it can come off. So there we are. Um, it certainly wouldn't go on this, but uh, that's really not important right now. Uh, however, will I change from my shub dingly dangly C3s to a string and six string, or will I change to a cradle or a, I'm sorry, a cradle or a stirrup? No, the other way around, stirrup or a cradle. Um, I think not, honestly. I think it's a nice little piece of engineering. Uh, I, I'm not going to um, go and buy a Shub F15 tune for a hundred and something, and I'm not going to buy the page uh, for about 60 pounds. But I am so grateful to Robin in Wales, who has, out of the kindness of his heart and the contents of his guitar drawer, sent me this perfectly functional Dario cradle capo which is nicely made um, and I shall leave it in my conservatory music here above my accessory box and when I bring in other guitars for a little noodle and things like that that's the one I will use so next question is what capo do you use and why has a capo ever let you down have one broken disassembled I saw um, Peter Rowan performing once and his cable, capo completely collapsed on him. It was a cradle type and it completely collapsed on him in the middle of a song. Um, and um, so I don't know whether that was what make it was, probably none of these. Um, and um, uh, are they reliable? Do they keep things in tune? Can you expect a capo to keep things in tune when they're dealing with a lot of different string heights across the fingerboard and and a lot of different tensions and a lot of different gauges. Is that fair to assume or is that something that we have to take responsibility for? Let me have your comments below. I read all the comments and I respond to most of them. And um, let's, let's have a little bit of fun discussing capos. And if you have a sweetened tooth uh, tuning method, uh, let's share that as well. I might be able to make another video out of it. So anyway, if you have been, Thanks for watching. Bye.